in 2008, a police officer by the name of uh, Corelli, Officer Anthony Corelli, apparently uh, shot in a in a or or brutalized, excuse me, beat a a uh, a person under his. Uh, I, I'm not sure how you, how you say this. Uh, he, he beat up a guy. And is charged with police brutality. In fact, he's going to court shortly in this 2008 police brutality case. This is the guy, apparently, if I have this right, who is the police officer who killed 68-year-old Kenneth Chamberlain, uh, whose story we talked about uh, earlier in the week when when this uh, first came to light. On the line with us is Randolph McLaughlin, who is the attorney for the Chamberlain family, and Kenneth Chamberlain, Jr., the son of the 68-year-old retired Marine who was shot to death by this police officer. And uh, let me, gentlemen, welcome both of you to the program. Thank you. Hello. How are you? Thank you. I'm I'm fine. Um, uh, First of all, Mr. McLaughlin, as the attorney, do I, have have I asserted anything here that's that's not factual? Well, just to give a little more detail. Sure. um, Mr. Corelli's name was revealed today um, in an article by the, by Juan Gonzalez of the Daily News, who actually dug out this name and, and the case against him. He is he has been identified by the police commissioner of White Plains as the officer who shot and killed Kent Chamberlain Sr. Um, after an hour long siege at, at Mr. Chamberlain's door. Um, literally, they lifted the door off the hand hinges and just came in and, without any provocation, shot and killed him. Mm-hmm. Turns out that Corelli had a similar incident, only he didn't kill this person. He arrested two individuals who were of Jordanian descent, and while they were in handcuffs, uh, at least one of them, the complaint charged that Corelli beat the man and kicked him in his groin and called him raghead, which is a ethnic a slur against people of Arab descent. Sure. Um, now we know why they didn't release his name, because they, they knew they had a problem cop on their hands, yeah. And they didn't want this getting out, that this was the per- person who killed and shot and killed Mr. Chamberlain. That's, that's uh, amazing. Kenneth Chamberlain, Jr., you're, you're, first of all, thank you for joining us on the program, sir. Thank you. You, you are, uh, it must be very difficult to have your father uh, killed in this fashion. He, he had a medical alert uh, uh, thing, you know, what do you call it, necklace, whatever. In the a pendant, yeah. Pendant, thank you. Uh, that went off and uh, summoned help, and uh, tell us about the help that he got. <laughs> well, that, the help that he received wasn't help at all. The people that were sworn to protect him actually came and shot and killed him. Mm-hmm. And for my family, of course, you know, no one would ever think that they would lose a family member this way. I mean, that's the last way that anybody wants to lose a family member. Mm -hmm. And then for the fact that even from the beginning, the spin that the police department put on it in the news where they said police fatally shoot hatchet-wielding men, you would think that it's someone in the street running around trying to harm people when, in fact, my father was in his home, accidentally triggered the pendant. They arrived. He said to them, that he was okay, he did not call them, yet they insisted on getting in his home, and he refused to let them in. And then they used uh, exorcisms and racial slurs and then ultimately shot and killed him. And I've asked over and over again to reveal the name of the officer that was involved in the shooting, and they did not want to give it to us. But due to uh, the investigator reporting as my attorney said from Juan Gonzalez, it turns out his name was Anthony Corelli, and he has other charges pending right now. Right. Well, Kenneth Chamberlain Jr., my wife's grandmother was in her 90s, and she had one of these medical alert pendants. And about once a month, she used to accidentally set the thing off, and people would come to her apartment. She was never shot. She was white. Your father was African-American. Do you believe that that plays a role in this? Well, it, 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 it is a component in this, I believe, and it's a very serious one. But, but at the same time, I've, I've always said that it's not, just, uh, it's not just looking at the fact that it's police officers 
uh, shooting or killing men and women and children of color. It's 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 more of a police misconduct thing, brutality mm-hmm. and criminality, and that you have some officers that should not be bad. They mm-hmm. should not have guns or badges because they feel like with that they can do whatever they want to do to whomever they want, and there is no recourse for it. There, there is no accountability. And hopefully, with this situation getting so much attention, maybe it will bring about some type of change where they'll start to um, put these networks together for police accountability and, and criminally indict these officers so that they let them go to jail just like anyone else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I, I want to say, Mr. Chamberlain, uh, I'm so sorry for your loss, and I'm sure our viewers and listeners would extend that if, if they could. Um, uh, Attorney McLaughlin, how can something like this happen? How can we prevent this from happening again to someone else's father or child? Well, I think that what's critical in these types of cases, and what we're trying to see uh, whether it even happened in White Plains, is that when you hire officers, you need to screen them psychologically to make sure that they don't have anger management issues, and if you find out during the course of their employment that they do have those issues, get them the help that they need so they don't subject the public to brutality and death. And furthermore, the, the officers need to be trained in how to deal with a variety of situations that they will come in contact with. For instance, they're at this door. They claimed Mr. Chamberlain was emotionally disturbed. Well, then how should you respond to someone like that? If that's what you believe is going on, do you bang on his door for an hour? Do you taunt him? So I really lay this, this, the blame in two places. One, at the feet of that officer who pulled the gun. Two, at the feet of the supervisors who were there with him and did nothing to control the situation or to control their subordinates. And three, at the feet of the city of White Plains that failed to train these officers and make sure they knew how to perform their jobs so that the public was safe. You know, it seems that uh, in those societies where police officers and teachers, the people uh, who are entrusted to our safety and our future, and with whom we entrust our future, are well paid, and there are very high standards to become a police officer or a teacher. Uh, those societies seem to to function quite well. I'm I'm thinking in particular of Scandinavian societies, um, whereas those societies like the United States, where uh, police officers and increasingly teachers are becoming more and more poorly paid jobs, and state governments are trying to even take away their rights to collectively bargain as we're seeing across the Midwest, uh, this, this has to lead to a downward spiral in the quality of the people uh, in, in the police force. I, I think it's certainly demoralizing. I mean, for, for the longest time, we had a notion in, in police hiring that we want to uh, professionalize our police force mm-hmm. to require that they have a, a college degree, which I thought was, a, was an excellent idea to make sure that these officers were exposed to a variety of issues and types of people and not just living in small little monochromatic isolated communities and then having to come into the big city and police people that don't look like them. Right. Um, but I'm really worried about, about where, we, where we're going with the labor issues and, and really the attack on labor may actually, may actually work to, to, to lead to teachers who are not as qualified and officers who are not as qualified. Yeah, I, I, I think this is the case. Um, Mr. Chamberlain, Mr. McLaughlin, thank you both for coming on the program and sharing uh, your stories with us. And Mr. Chamberlain, in particular, our, our, our very best wishes to you and your family. Please pass them on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, this has got to be a really, really, really tough thing to go through. I, I just can't imagine. Fifteen minutes past the hour.